and welcome back to this I-24 News Daily Debate. And we will say now a special welcome to viewers in Spain who join the I-24 News Orbit. Buenas tardes a todos que nos están viendo ahora en España. Es un gran placer para nosotros y esperamos que nos van a ver cada día acá en I-24 News. And we are moving on today as the European Commission Horizon project is set to begin in 2020. Israel is deep in negotiations with European Union over the country joining the EU's flagship scientific initiative. The talks, however, have come to a halt after the European Commission recently issued anti-settlement guidelines prohibiting any EU funding of Israeli units built beyond the pre-1960 67 borders. And joining me tonight is Dr. Emmanuel Navon, international relations expert at the IDC and Tel Aviv University. Good evening. Thank Good you evening. very much for coming. And Ron Benishai, national security analyst at Wynet. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for coming to Good the evening. studio. So what does it mean? Are we going to be and uh, do we have any reasons to worry for 2020? No, not anymore. It seems that there is going to be a compromise. Uh, as it stands now, I mean, as of 10 minutes ago, uh, it looks as if they are nearing an agreement uh, that basically uh, each side will uh, state what its his position and the other side will state his position and they will agree not to agree and they will put it in right no no i'm serious they will, they will put it in writing like the israelis and the palestinians they will agree not to agree yeah <laughs> yeah so, something like this but but it will be clear from from this paper that israel doesn't commit itself to the 67 borders this is the main point mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that the Europeans are not going to give any money to any operation, uh, uh, whether academic or non-academic or economic, um, uh, beyond, the green, b beyond the green line without prejudging what are going to be the outcome of the negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. So uh, how important, actually, us being a part of this scientific cooperation, Israel being a part of this uh, cooperation with the EU? Well, Israel, first of all, is the only uh, non-European country that is part of this scientific program. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the Europeans recognize uh, Israel's scientific excellence, and this is why Israel joined these programs uh, for the first time in 1998. Uh, but uh, this uh, program, the Horizon 2020, which is supposed to start on uh, the 1st of January 2014, for the first time, the European Commission uh, added this new uh, demand that Israel was supposed basically to officially uh, recognize, so to speak, that any Israeli presence beside the Green Line uh, is illegal. And Israel was not going to agree on that. On the other hand, both Israel and the European Union have an interest of keeping their cooperation uh, for Israel, that represents a lot of money and cooperation with leading institutions in Europe. And for the Europeans, they benefit from Israeli uh, technological uh, uh, excellence. So both sides have an interest in closing a deal. And this is why, from what we understand a few minutes ago, indeed, uh, a compromise was reached. So if we're reaching a compromise, uh, and like you said, this is a big deal for Israel and this cooperation, this c compromise, what does it mean for the EU? The EU understand actually that Israel uh, uh, building in the settlements is actually in some parts of the borders in the 1967 is maybe inevitable? No, 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 don't go so far. Okay. <clears throat> the EU is against it. As a matter of fact, the EU wanted to make a point by these guidelines <clears throat> to its institutions and its uh, economic uh, um, uh, structures that they would not deal with the Israeli, whether economic or academic institutions, beyond the so-called green line. Um, but the, the fact that, that the EU uh, got to a compromise means that the EU has interest. And the EU doesn't want to be perceived as a, 
as the, the international body <clears throat> that uh, tries to, to determine, to lock the, the outcome of the negotiations between Israelis mm -hmm. and Palestinians. I don't, so peace, peace talks, because I don't believe it will lead to a peace, <laughs> but I think these negotiations will lead to something that will be valuable. An interim agreement, we, we have seen interim agreements recently. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's complicated. It, diplomatically, it's trying to square the, the circle, but uh, they succeed. If, the diplo if there is a diplomatic will, there is a, there is a diplomatic outcome. So let's talk diplomacy. How are, is, are the Palestinians going to actually see this kind of agreement between Israel and the EU? Because it seems that until now the EU actually um, supported the Palestinians, and this kind of agreement may be just a little bit makes the ground not stable under the, the feet of uh, the Palestinians. Well, first of all, uh, according to the information that is available, at least, the EU didn't really give in on anything in those negotiations. So it's not that they, they, con they, they compromised on anything. And I think that the Palestinians have no reason to complain, because as a matter of fact, the EU has a double standard policy when it comes to disputed territory. The EU doesn't have any restrictions on the Occupy Northern Cyprus or on the fishery agreement that it just signed with Morocco that includes Western Sahara, which is also a disputed territory, and the EU does not recognize Moroccan sovereignty over Western Sahara, and yet it does not apply any restrictions, neither on Western Sahara or Northern Cyprus. It does on the West Bank. So the Palestinians have very little reason to complain because the EU does apply a double standard, which is specific, only applies to Israel. It did not withdraw from that policy. Uh, so I think that the Palestinians are the last uh, to complain about the EU's policy. So I I'm just coming back from Brussels, meeting with the EU uh, officials from the Commission to the other bodies, there is a great deal of how shall I say, anti-Israeli anti sentiment there that is almost tangible physically. It's, 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 it's a sad fact. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy about it. But on the other hand, uh, the Europeans are entitled. They are also afraid <coughs> that if Israel will not join the Horizon 2020, they will lose their clout they will lose influence in the Middle East, because Israelis will shut them down. And this maybe is the political Maybe they will lose their objectivity thing. in a way or another? Then, the, or there, there is no objectivity. No objectivity. Forget <laughs> about objectivity. Yeah, this is no, exactly what I wanted in, to in, hear. In international affairs, as uh, uh, Emmanuel can, can testify, there, there are no <coughs> objectivity, there are only interests. And the, the European Union, European Union has interest to influence the course of event in the Middle East. If either, if the, the European, the European Union is not perceived in, by Israel as a honest broker, so to say, not objective, honest broker, then they are shut off the, the negotiations or so the process. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think that if the uh, if an agreement hadn't been reached, uh, Israel might have not signed this uh, Horizon 2020, as the uh, as a matter of fact, the foreign minister threatened. And then, of course, as you said, the uh, the EU would have been basically excluded from uh, uh, from the uh, Israeli-Palestinian track, uh, and would have lost any credibility. So they were not interested either in being uh, in being shut down from uh, from the Middle East. Uh, and I think that the, um, basically the agreement is going to be that Israel agrees de facto uh, that the EU fund does not go beyond the green line, but the, e the EU will not demand from Israel to declare, which was the original guideline, that basically Israel 
accepts the EU uh, position, which is that any Israeli presence besides beyond the armistice line of 1949 is illegal, because if that's the case, so what is there to negotiate exactly between Israel and the Palestinian Authority? So this is what Israel could not accept, rightly so in my opinion. I think the European understood that and realized that they went too far, especially, as I said before, in light of the fact that they do not have such a policy for other disputed territories, such as northern Cyprus and western Sahara. So, like you said, you, you told me this all, everything is, is uh, um, it's a deal, it's a, like the deal was reached and everything is, uh, comes down to interests. And except that it's, it is a big prestige for Israel to be part of the Horizon 2020, what is the main interest of Israel? Or maybe let me put it on the table, how much is Israel going to get from this participation in the 2020 horizon? Well, first of all, there is a, obviously a financial and economic interest. I mean, Israel, as I said before, has been part of these uh, programs. They used to be called framework program since 1998. And according to the statistics, I mean, the way these programs work is like an investment fund. Each country <coughs> contributes to the fund and gets in return whatever its companies and institutions obtain if they're good enough and lucky enough and successful enough. So there's no guaranteed return, contrary to what many reports in Israel say in the, in the media. You know, the, the media reports I read in our heads this morning that we would put 600 million euros and we would, Seven, get, and we would, we, and we would get back 900. That's not true. There's no, there's no guarantee that it would happen. We would get a return if we are successful. You can also lose money. So far, the return has been 1.2 on average for every euro we put in, which is very good. But it's not the 1.5, the guaranteed 1.5 that the Israeli media is talking about. That is nonsense. Uh, so there is a financial interest. Uh, uh, and also the fact that Israel is part of all these uh, research projects with very prestigious European uh, academic institutions, uh, research institutes, uh, uh, companies. Uh, there are many uh, benefits to it. I do not think that the Israeli government, which was an option that is what was cons considered when uh, uh, two, two, or two or three days ago, that Israel would put directly this money in its own R&D if it wasn't part of the European Horizon 2020. Uh, I'm not sure that the Israeli uh, Treasury, the Ministry of the Treasury, would agree to that. So there is definitely, there are financial and scientific benefits to it. And this is why Israel uh, did not shut the door to the EU. There is also. <clears throat> another element, and this is the access to all the research venues that are a, either European or that Europeans are taking part with other a, third parties, so to say. So it, it is a big benefit. It is a big benefit for the Israeli research. It makes Israeli researchers part of a almost global program. That, that, that is very important for the Israeli researchers to be able to contribute and to share what others are, are contributing, including databases and things like this. I, I think it is, it is very important for Israel. It is very important for Israel to be considered part of the European scientific community. And uh, what else? And money. You just mentioned the feelings that uh, the, the anti-Semitic light uh, towards uh, Jewish... I didn't say anti-Semitic. I said anti-Israeli, which yeah, other anti people say, and, and maybe rightly so, that this is the latent old, good old anti-Semitism. So could, could this anti-Israel uh, feelings Sentiment, or yeah. sentiments mm -hmm. uh, can disappear mm -hmm. in, a, in, this, uh, in this participation, in a cooperation no. like that, maybe change the way that people think towards Israel? No. 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 The, the, this sentiment has other reasons than, than it is not the settlements, it is it has to deal with the huge Islamic communities in, that are growing now in Europe, and there are constituencies that many. I, I, I spoke to the <coughs> Foreign Affairs Committee of the Belgian Parliament in their session, full plen plenary session. There are many members who came to me later and said, "Look, we have." Muslim voters, you don't vote for us. We don't have Jewish 
except for Antwerp or or Samada or Liège. Gentlemen, or, or we will continue uh, this uh, outside. Uh, for In the meantime, we're going out for a small break. Ten minutes break, an update from our news desk. Thank you very much for this. Both gentlemen, ten minutes break, and I'll be back.